This coffin lid is extraordinarily well made. Look at the polish. Look at the curvature. It's in basalt, which was beyond the capability of the dynastic Egyptians. So we may be looking at a pre-dynastic artifact contemporary with the construction of the Great Pyramids on the Giza Plateau, which we date at being at least 12,000 years old, having been made with lost ancient high technology. So compare the smooth polish of the ones you or the one you just saw with this one, which is much cruder in an equally hard stone, likely cyanite or granite. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, city of brotherly love. So what the hell am I doing here? Well, believe it or not, the Penn Museum here at this university has at least 600 Peruvian skulls that were acquired in the 19th century. And from photos on the internet, some clearly appear to be extraordinarily elongated. So we're going to see if we can get access to the collection and examine these interesting skulls. So, no elongated skulls on display at the Penn Museum. And actually only one Peruvian skull, and it was just a normal one. So, I'll let Hugh Newman take over after this, and you'll see his exploration in the warehouse um, at the Penn Museum from a, a few years back, where he filmed two very intriguing, not only Peruvian elongated skulls, but likely Paracas culture skulls, and likely they were found at the only place where the extreme elongated skulls are found, and that's at the graveyard called Chongos, near Pisco, Peru. So we're with, uh, what's your full name, if you don't mind? Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell, <laughs> with Paul Mitchell in the <laughs> Pennsylvania Museum, and we found this very small, incredibly elongated skull. Uh, and wh where's this from? Oh, this is Peruvian. Any idea what area? 
No, um, what I can do is if you're interested, I will uh, forward you all the records. Uh, this is one of the Morton, uh, this is a skull from the Morton Cranial Collection. This was... Uh, that must be a young child. Isn't it? Uh, look, looking at the teeth, it's about uh, uh, four or five. And uh, I've been told by my advisor, who is the curator of physical anthropology, that uh, this is an individual who, uh, by dint of this extreme cranial deformation, was unlikely to have had sufficient oxygen, you know, sufficient, you know, wasn't getting enough blood or oxygen to the brain at the most posterior, posterior parts, the furthest back parts of the head. That could have been a probable cause of death. Less extreme, obviously, cranial deformations aren't going to cause that particular physiological conundrum. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this is probably the most extreme that we have. We have quite a few other ones there. Is there any more just in this uh, drawer? No, I got some. Uh, well, in this drawer, that's an interesting question. And then this, so this is our this is our best one. And uh, just so you know, I'm going to give you a website that you can go to. And the one you want to search for, all right, it's 1681. I'll remember that. 1681. But um, let's see if there's anything else interesting around.